excerpted from Nova. Surviving AIDS. This segment showcases the work of David Ho and Stephen O'Brien. By examining the outliers in this case, people like Steve Cron, whose cells repeatedly resisted HIV infection, Ho and his colleagues found a genetic mutation that prevents the HIV virus from entering the cell. This clip includes animation of HIV entering a white blood cell through the CD4 and CCR5 receptors on the cell's surface. Some individuals have no CCR5 gene, which means that HIV cannot enter their cells. Scientists are using this new information in the development of an AIDS vaccine. Darwin couldn't actually see natural selection acting in real time. But today, scientists can, by observing the evolution of HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Jeff Gustafson has been infected with HIV for over a decade. He takes a host of medications, but to little avail. The virus keeps adapting, evolving into new strains that evade the drugs. There's a pervasive feeling that all you have to do is take your medicine and you'll be okay, and that really isn't the case. You know, HIV has the capacity to evolve no matter what you give it. There are 19 HIV drugs on the market today, and of those 19, I've already been through 14 of them. Clarence Johnson, too, is locked in a daily struggle against the rapidly evolving virus. Sometimes I feel like I'm fighting a losing battle. I haven't given up yet, but there have been times that I just want to just lay down and give up. But um, I can't leave my family behind. <laughs> Clarence Johnson's doctor, Michael Sag, has seen HIV evolve into new varieties over the last dozen years. The virus is constantly changing, subject to the forces of natural selection in the environment of a patient's body. Imagine we didn't have the concept of evolution, and we started giving drugs to patients that in the test tube look great, and all of a sudden, the virus starts coming back, and it's not susceptible to the drugs anymore. What a mystery. How in the world did that happen? There's only one way that it happened, through evolution. Once inside a patient's white blood cells, HIV replicates at an alarming rate. Billions of new viruses are spawned every day. And each time it reproduces, random genetic copying mistakes, mutations, result in slightly different varieties of the virus bursting forth into the bloodstream. Some of these new varieties, just by chance, will have traits that make them resistant to certain drugs. So when drugs enter the bloodstream, natural selection favors the drug-resistant forms. They survive and reproduce. Before long, drug-resistant viruses dominate in the patient's body. Evolution seems pretty easy to understand when we look at big animals. We can kind of see it, in a sense. But that's evolution that took centuries to develop. When you're talking about something like a virus that you can't see in everyday life, it's hard to imagine how it changes. In the case of HIV, we're talking about minutes to hours to move from one species to another. It's mind-boggling in terms of the speed with which HIV can replicate. How are you feeling overall? I'm doing okay. Great, doing okay. Today. Every time I see a patient, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what is the virus doing in the environment of that patient? The virus is producing itself on the order of billions of copies a day. Those few that happen to be able to work in the presence of drug say, hey, this is my chance, and they emerge. So it creates the appearance that the virus has thought this through but in fact, it's just a matter of chance. It's a matter of a virus being there that's not susceptible to the drugs. It emerges, and the virus begins to win the war. That's just what happened to Jeff Gustafson. Each time he tried a new drug, the virus evolved to resist it. Even a cocktail of multiple drugs made little difference. Here is this puny little virus that doesn't have a brain. And yet it can outwit some of the top scientists in the world. All the, the virus has going for it is it, it can't copy itself too well. 
I mean, that's pretty awe-inspiring and scary. Humans and HIV only recently embarked on the path that might eventually lead to a truce. There must be people endowed with mutations that protect them from HIV. Over a 10 year period of time, I quietly collected blood samples from 10,000 individuals that are high risk. My colleagues and I extracted the DNA and we were stunned to discover a whopping mutation which protected against HIV infection. And it was the first gene that we could definitively say was influencing the outcome of exposure to this deadly virus. Most people have receptors on their immune cells that allow HIV to dock and gain entry. But people with the mutation discovered by O'Brien lack some or all of these receptors. Infection by HIV becomes impossible. The mutation is present in about 10% of European Caucasians, but completely absent in native African and East Asian peoples. Something in the evolutionary history of Caucasians must have favored the survival of people with this mutation. We've actually used precise dating techniques to date the last time such a selective pressure took place. And that came out 700 years ago. Well, if you look in the history books, that was the time of a rather dramatic infectious disease uh, pandemic, which was the Black Death or the bubonic plague. And at that time, a third of Europeans were wiped out. A mutation that saved people from the plague seven centuries ago may now protect their descendants from infection by HIV. Today, when we scroll through the genes of humans, we discover that they're littered with these footprints of historic epidemics that have defined the survival of today's living species. <laughs> 